Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 3-2 of November 2009 for A-level math. Uh, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now let's move on to question number one. So here we have to solve the equation. Solving means finding the unknown. Here we have to find the value of x. Right. Uh, how can we simplify this? So by observation, we can see here we have ln and ln. So we can combine them together. You have ln of 5. Here we have minus become divide of x. Right. And here we have ln of 5 minus x. Now, because we have ln on both sides, it will cancel out. So you will have 5 minus x will be 5 over x. Obviously, next step will be to cross multiply. To simplify, you will have 5x minus x squared. That will be 5. Let's rearrange and everything to one side. You will have x squared minus 5x plus 5. That will be 0. Now, as you can see, this one is a quadratic equation. And since they asked you to provide your answers to 3SF, you kind of understand we have to use our formula, right? So x will be what? Minus b, that should be 5, plus minus b squared is 25, minus 4 times 1 times 5, that should be 5. We can check, obviously, so 5 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 5, 5, right? And divided by 2a, so 2 times a will be 2. So 1 by 1 x will be two values, right? So it will be 5 plus root of 5 divided by 2. That could be 3.62, or it could be 5 minus root of 5 divided by 2, 1.38. So two possible values here, this and this. Now obviously, usually we have to always double check if that is good or not. For example, if you plug in x here, if this is going to be negative, it will not be good, but by observation, these two are less than 5, so we both are good. So in the end, well, x have to be 1.38 and 3.62. So this is the values of x correct to 3SF, and that is your question number 1. Now let's move on to question number 2. So here we have the equation this. Uh, let me write this down again. It is x power 3 uh, minus 8x minus 13 is equal to 0, has one real root. Okay, that is the equation that we have. Now part 1, find two consecutive integers, which are the whole numbers, between which this root lies. Okay, so usually how would you do that? So usually we do now, we will call this f of x, right, usually. Let f of x be our function, which is x cubed minus this one, minus this one is so of course we will not we would not add this right now. That's fine. We just have f of x is equal to this equation. Now we don't really know where the root lies. We have to test by trial. I would say this is the most logical train of thoughts uh, because I don't think you guys will want to draw graphs right away. But in some cases you can do that as well just to have an idea. But let's do a trial, right? You will say, well, let me begin with f one. Let's see what happens. You have. 1 minus 8 minus 13, that should be minus 20. Now I have f2, has to be consecutive, right? So 2 will be 8 minus 16 minus 13. It is still negative, so not good. f3, that will be uh, 27 minus 24 minus 13 minus 10. Okay, it is, it is uh, decreasing, so we can continue. f4, that will be 4 power 3 minus 8 times 4, minus 13. Okay, it is 19. As you can see, the sign changes from 3 to 4. So by observation, by trial and error, we can say that well safely, the root lies between the value of 3 and 4 because of the change in sign. Now for part 2, we have to use this formula to find this root to two decimal place. Now let me write this down again. The formula provided was x, this one, is equal to 8, this 1, plus 13, power 1 over 3. Now, what is x1? x1, obviously, we know it lies between those two. Let me use the midpoint of my as my x1. Let x1 be this. Now, x2 is what? x3, x4, x5. Let's see what happens. So first, my x1 will be 3.5. This will be my answer. 
let me plug this in that will have 8 answer plus 13 power 1 over 3 that will be okay this is not fine let me write again so 3.5 is my answer right that is 8 answer plus 13 power 1 over 3 inside brackets that'll be 3 points four, four, to 4 decimal place yep 4482 next one 3.4366 let's continue that'll be 3.4 3, 3, 2. X7 will be what? 3.4332. 3, 3, last one. And as you can see, it converges to the value of 3.332. 3, 2. So finally, obviously, to correct to uh, two decimal place, X will have to be 3.43. 3. Okay, and that is your question number two. Let's move on to question number three. So here we have the equation of a curve is this. So let me write this out again. It is x power 3 minus x square y minus y cube has to be 3. This is my equation of the curve. Now, first question, find dy by dx in terms of x and y. As you can see, this is an implicit uh, equation. So we have to proceed as such. So first, we have the differentiate with respect to x. That will be what? So that will be 3 x squared. Then here we have minus. Again, I will use bracket because we have minus sign. It can affect things in this uh, differentiation. It is a product, so let's use the product rule. First, I will leave this one by itself. Then differentiate this one with respect to x, that will be 1. And then dy by dx. And then plus y times 2x. This will be minus 3y squared, then dy by dx, obviously. It has to be 0. So let's proceed step by step and simplify this. So you will have 3 x squared minus x squared dy by dx and then minus again because you have to add the minus sign in the bracket. That will be 2xy. And then here we have minus 3, this one, dy by dx. Okay, so we can send this and this to the other side because it is negative, you will become positive, right? You will have 3y square dy by dx plus x square dy by dx e is equal to so here we have 3x square minus 2xy so by factorization I can have dy by dx outside as a subject so you will have 3y square plus x square e is equal to 3 x squared minus 2xy, right? So again, subject dy by dx, we want to find that, right? So divide by this, you will have 3 x squared minus 2xy over the value of 3y squared plus x squared. Okay, so this is my dy by dx in terms of x. So one thing I want to clarify is, for example, differentiate this with respect to x. You will have 3 times this thing and then minus 1 to the power simple as that now let's say I have y here differentiate with respect to x you will have 3 y square and then multiply by dy by dx I hope you get the idea whenever it's not x we have to add this one at the end for example we have the product product here x square y how would you do this first we have to put this as it is and differentiate this one that will be just 1 but it is y so we have to add dy by dx, then plus, we can leave this one by itself, and this one is x, that will be 2x. As you can see, every time we are differentiating y, we add dy by dx at the end. That's the main idea behind these kind of differentiation. But this is part one. We have found dy by dx in terms of x and y. Done. Now, uh, for part two, we have to find the equation of the tangent. Tangent to the curve at the point of this. This is my x value, my y value giving you the answer in the form of this one. Okay, so one by one. Again, I have to find the value of dy by dx at the point x equal to 2 and y equal to 1. 
So in place, you will have what? 3 times 4 minus 2 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 1 plus 2 squared is 4. That will be 12 minus 4 divided by 7. So 12 minus 4 is 8. So 8 over 7 will be the gradient of the tangent. Right. So again, we have the point, which is 2, 1, is the passing point. This is my x value, my y value, so I'll use that. So y minus 1 over x minus 2 has to be equal to the gradient of the tangent. Now always remember, the, the gradient of the tangent at the point is just dy by dx at that point. That's, that's the main thing we have to understand. To find the gradient of tangent, it is just dy by dx at that point. That's the idea. Now cross multiply, you will have 7y minus 7, that should be 8x minus 16. Send this over here, or this over here, because we have to express in this form. Now it become minus 8x plus 7y. What is minus 7 plus 16? So always, why not use my calculator? That will be plus 9 is equal to 0. So in this form, as you can see, shown as required for part 2 of your question. The hardest part in this was really just to take your time with this, careful of the minus sign and we can replace and then make it become, this one become subject to find this and the rest is pretty simple forward on how to find equation of a straight line right that is your question number three so let's move on to question number four so here we have angles of alpha and beta lie in between this interval of 0 and 180 so here we have two equations let me write them down again so here we have tan of alpha is equal to 2 tan of beta here we have tan of alpha plus beta is equal to 3. So solve for the values of alpha and beta. So one by one. Let's first try to expand this by the formula that we know, which is what? Tan of alpha plus tan of beta divided by 1 minus tan of alpha and tan of beta is equal to 3. We can cross multiply. That will be what? 10 of alpha plus 10 of beta. That should be 3 minus 3. 10 of alpha, 10 of beta. Now, again, it's quite annoying to work with those values, right? 10, 10 of this, 10 of that. What I can do in the meantime, well, I can say let x be 10 of alpha for now and y be 10 of beta. So, replace you will have x equal to 2y by equation number 1. Here you will have x plus y equal to 3 minus 3xy. Replace this back in the equation. x is become 2y plus y is 3 minus 3x is 2y times y. So you will have 3y here, 3 minus 6y squared. Let's rearrange and everything to one side. You will have 6y squared plus 3y minus 3. That should be 0. Divide by 3 everywhere, you will have what? 2y squared plus y minus 1 is 0. Now, we can factorize, obviously. That will be 2y times y. 1 is 1 times 1. Now, to get plus 1, I have to have plus 2 minus 1. So y has to be the value of half and x will be minus 1. Now 1, y is this, what is the value of x? x is 2y, so x will be 1, or x here will be minus 2. But again, we're not working, we don't need to find x and y here, we have to find alpha and beta, so replace back the values that we know. So 1 by 1, for the first one, y is tan of beta is equal to the value of half. Okay, because tan is positive, it will be in the first quadrant and the third one. So let's find this value out. Beta will be 10 inverse of half, which is 25.6. Let's check. I'm not too sure, actually. So 10 inverse of half will be 26.6. So 26.6, or in this one will be 180 plus that, 206.6. But as you can see, the value can only be between 0 and 180, so we don't need this one. Okay, so next one. Uh, this one, x, is tan of alpha, so tan of alpha is equal to 1. Same thing, it is positive, has to be this and this. So we find this one directly, so alpha will be tan inverse of 1, which is simple, which is 45 degrees, right? Double check, 
45 and answer plus 180 45 plus 180 for the other one which is 225 but obviously it is outside the the domain we don't need that one that will be outside now what's next for this one y is tan of beta is equal to minus 1 now since tan is negative it will be ASTC will be here S and here this is the value of what of 180 minus the angle let's call this theta for now again whenever it's negative we don't find them directly we have to work with an angle now my I, I call this theta you can call this x if you want to no big deal anything you can call them or it could be 360 minus this angle over here so to find this angle it will be tan inverse of positive this value that will be 45 degrees over here after finding this value I can find beta according to my quadrants it is 180 minus 45 or 360 minus 45 so 180 minus 45 that will be 135 or will be 315 but again 315 will be outside so we don't need this one only this one now finally going back to this one for the value of tan alpha which is alpha so here we had uh, tan alpha is x so x will be this one now minus 2 as again similarly if it is a negative value it will be ASTC it will be here and here that will be 180 minus the angle that we are going to find and 360 minus the angle that we are going to find again whenever it's negative we don't find them directly compared to here it's positive pretty easy apply tan inverse directly no problem but here we have to go through this fake angle so theta will be tan inverse of the positive value of this one so tan inverse 2 that will be 63.4 so alpha will be using the quadrants will be 180 minus 63.4 or 360 minus 63.4 That is 116.6 or 360 minus 63.4. That should be 296.6. Obviously, this is too much. It will not be good enough for the value of alpha. So finally, by looking at all these values, let me write this down. Alpha can be what? 45 degrees or 116.6. And beta can be uh, 26.6 or 135 according to the quadrants so these are the possible values of alpha and beta for question number four now let's move on to question number five so here we have a polynomial uh, which is denoted by p of x so p of x let me write this down again it is given to you by what by 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 4 so this is p of x now the result of differentiating p of x so we have to differentiate that with respect to x is denoted by this one so let's find this so let's differentiate with respect to x that will give you 6x squared plus 2ax plus b minus 0 which is simply this one right we don't need a 0 at the end for for the differentiation of p of x now it is also given that um, x plus 2, this is x plus 2, is a factor of p of x. Okay? Now we take this value here, x plus 2. Now for what value of x? We equate to 0. It means that when x was this one, the value of this, when p taken the value of this, remainder was 0. So that's what we have to understand. So plug in into p of x. You will have 2 times minus 2 power 3 plus a times minus 2 square plus b times minus 2 minus 4 has to be 0 that would be 2 times minus 8 plus 4a minus 2b minus 4 has to be 0 so that will be 4a minus 2b and here you will have what minus 16 minus 4 should be minus 20 20 over here okay divided by 2 you will have uh, 2a minus b has to be 10 so b has to be the value of 2a minus 10 my equation number one now what else do we know as well we know that 
x plus 2 is also a factor of this one. So same steps for this value. p prime of this one has to give you 0 by definition. So you will have 6 minus 2 square plus 2 a minus 2 plus b has to be 0. 6 and 4 minus 4a plus b has to be 0. So here you will have 24 minus 4a plus b has to be 0. My equation number 2. Now we can solve this equation simultaneously, right, to find the value of a and b. So place b here in here. So 24 minus 4a, b is equal to 2a minus 10. Equate, you will have minus 4 plus 2 will be minus 2a. 24 minus this will be plus 14. So 2a is 14, so a will have to be the value of 7. So b will have to be 2 times 7 is 14, minus 10, that should be 4. Here you go. So we found the value of a and b, so a is 7, and b has to be 4. Here you go, that is part 1 done. Now part 2. We have to uh, factorize p of x completely. Now, okay, by definition, what do we know now? We know p of x is equal to what? 2 x cubed, a is plus 7 x squared, plus 4 x minus 4. Now, we have to break this down to factorize this. But one thing we know is that, well, the factor is x plus 2, so let's use that to carry out this long division first. Right, so we can break this down and then factorize the rest accordingly. Okay, how will you perform long division? So first thing first, how do you make x becomes 2x cubed? Multiply by 2 first and then x squared. Now take the whole thing times this. You will have 2x cubed over here plus 4x squared. So this will go away. 7 minus 4 will be 3x squared. Now, how do you make uh, x become this? Multiply by plus 3. x now become 3x square, and then plus 6. x. Here we have x, sorry, my apologies. I have to write the x here properly. That will be x here. That will be 6x, and then this will go away, and this will become minus 2x minus 4. Now, how do I make x become minus 2? x times minus 2. Now I become minus 2x, and 2 times this will be minus 4. And it is supposed to give you 0 as expected, because it is a factor, remainder has to be 0. Now what does it really mean? It means that, well, I am able to rewrite this as what? As x plus 2 multiplied by 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now can you factorize this one? Let's check. That will be 2x times x. 2 is 2 times 1. I have to get uh, plus 3, so plus 4 minus 1. So done. As you can see, p of x by factorization completely. That will be this, time this one, and this one. So again, the big deal was just to carry out the long division step by step. So we get this as the quotient. So it means that p of x can be written as this time this. First step. Now we realize, well, we can actually factorize this one. So two brackets. 2x squared is 2x times x, fair enough. 2 is 2 times 1. To get plus 3, you have to have plus 4, and then minus 1. That'll be plus 3. Now minus times plus should be minus. Here we have minus, so good to go. Confirm this is the right factorization. So here we go. This is the complete factorization of P of x for part 2 of your question. Question number 5. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.